vice-president Ramdin Sarjo, heeft als chief guest van 7 tot en met 9 januari jongstleden op uitnodiging van de Indiaanse minister van Overzeese Zaken, Vajalar Ravi, deelgenomen aan de 7e Parwasi Bharatiya Divas, de Indiaanse diaspora. Dit grootste evenement, waaraan duizenden Indiërs uit diverse delen van de wereld deel hebben genomen, werd gehouden te Chennai, de hoofdplaats van de deelstaat Tamil Nadu in Zuid-India. De officiële opening geschiedde met een indrukwekkende culturele manifestatie met opvoeringen van de verschillende wervelende klassieke dansstijlen waaraan India zo rijk is. Eregast bij dit gebeuren waren vicepresident Ramdin Sarju en echtgenote Ilse Sarju Bihari. Wij brengen u fragmenten van dit cultureel spektakel.
chief guest, vice-president Ramdin Sarju, had de eer om tijdens de openingssessie met als belangrijkste toehoorder minister-president Manmohan Singh van India de aanwezigen als volgt toe te spreken. Sri Pradhan Mandri Mahanabhau Bhayodeyo Abhamara Nuskar Adamsi I was honored as the Speaker of the National Assembly of the Republic of Suriname to address participants from all over the world on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Lok Sabha in 2003. And it is now my great privilege to be the chief guest of the 7th Bharatiya Pravasi Divas. Also, on behalf of the people and the government of the Republic of Suriname, I wish to thank the government of India for providing me these significant opportunities. Suriname and India has a long-standing relationship. Last year, on the 5th of June, we commemorated the 135th anniversary of the Indian immigration of indentured laborers in Suriname. The immigrants that came to Suriname hailed mainly from Uttar Pradesh and Bihar and from various other parts of this great country of India, including some of the magnificent city of Madras, as Chennai was called in those days. With the zeal and enthusiasm, which has proven to be a characteristic of immigrants from India, the world all over. Their descendants in Suriname have achieved many milestones within their relatively brief history. Although the urge for independence was present from an early stage, with many colonized peoples, the process of decolonization became more distinct after World War in Suriname. This process led to the first general elections in 1949, like other backward groups. The Indians also acquired the opportunity to participate in the government of their country. In this process of decolonization, the Indians in Suriname were also inspired by Gandhiji's Satyagraha and the Swaraj movement in India. Countless songs were sung in Bhartaganas during manifestations in Suriname. Time has shown that due to this deep adherence to and veneration of Indian philosophy, cultural and spiritual values such as the tolerance and peaceful coexistence have remained constant factors which serve as foundations in the lives of the Indian descendants. These foundations are illustrated in, among others, the following things. Swearing in ceremonies for all high posts, even those of president and vice president, one can be sworn in on the Bhagavad Gita, the Vedas, and the Quran, besides the Bible. Idul Fitr and Holi have become national holidays. Pandits and Malvis have been authorized to perform marriage ceremonies which are legally recognized. The progress of the Indian in Suriname has been possibly because of the politics based on brotherhood, peace, and harmony. Due to the support of their brethren, whom Ki met in their newly adopted homeland, their adaptation as well as their transition to prosperity has been peaceful in a spirit of tolerance and mutual respect in which there is space and recognition of each entity in our multi-ethnic, multicultural, and multi-religious society. In Suriname, the Indian descendants together with the other Surinamese brothers and sisters 
have put into practice, the philosophy that our ancient Indian ancestors have professed and cherished for centuries. Vasudeva Kutumba Kumba, the whole world is one family. And Ekang said, Vipra Vodavadanti, there is one God to whom we pray in many ways. From the early days of the settlement of Indians in Suriname to very recently the context with India were mainly cultural and educational with exchanges of teachers in various fields of art, culture and language. This cultural exchange was epitomized in June 2003 in the seventh World Hindi Conference, which was inaugurated in Suriname by the President, His Excellency, Mr. Ronaldo Ronald Venetian, while my humble self, at that time Speaker of the Parliament, had the honor to deliver a speech in Hindi and Suriname, our name for Bhojpuri, during the opening ceremonies. This same year, in March 2003, had earlier witnessed the first ever Surinamese presidential visit to India. This event heralded new and distinct addition of an economic dimension in the bilateral relationship between Suriname and India. Ever since, both the countries have agreed to cooperate in various economic fields, health, trade, energy, agriculture including organic farming, mining, tourism, trade and industry, banking, ICT, forestry, communication and transport, apart from education and culture. It may note with satisfaction that an increasing progress is noticeable in these fields while more and more projects are about to start or are in serious consideration. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in these times of great global economic crisis, the results are felt and will be felt even more intensely by each individual country, most by small and developing ones as has been predicted by authoritative, political, and monetary sources. We are also aware that, fortunately, these crises and challenges can be countered by intensive and fruitful forms of cooperation, which will lead to opportunities to progress. As I am conscious to, that today India has become a world leader and business process outsourcing, information technology, and pharmaceutical skills, also in view of the establishment of the Association of the South American Nations, Suriname, with its strategic location on the continent of South America, is willing to serve as a commercial hub to India for the entire continent. Suriname also welcomes the interest that India has shown to cooperate with the CARICOM. As a member state, I wish to confirm that this cooperation will lead to mutual benefit. In this context, I also wish to express my pleasure that this conference of the Bharati Pravasi Divas has one of its third themes, preservation of Indian language and culture in the Caribbean. I may reveal to you that the Indian diaspora and Suriname has long-standing cultural exchanges, especially in song, dance, and music with the CARICOM sister countries, which nowadays are also included in the biennial Caribbean festival called CARIFESTA. Suriname and India have always cooperated in various global forums such as WTO, the NEM, and the UN. 
like India, Suriname advocates a multipolar world and peaceful solutions of disputes. Hence, my country reiterates its support to India for a permanent seat in the Reformed Security Council of the United Nations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we also lament needless loss of innocent lives due to mindless acts of terrorism that India has been a victim to in recent years, and especially the gruesome death of numerous persons of various nationalities in Mumbai on the 26th of November 2008. Excellencies, ladies, gentlemen, Suriname pledges its support to India in all global forums to eradicate menace of terrorism in all its forms. Thank you. Namaskar. Vanwege de vele verdiensten in zijn geboorteland Suriname, als nazaat van Brits-Indische immigranten, werd onze vicepresident onderscheiden door de president van India, mevrouw Prabhati Devi Singh Patil. Kijkers, we hebben u een beeld gegeven van het bezoek van een Surinaamse delegatie onder leiding van vicepresident Ramdin Sardjou naar de zevende Indiaanse diaspora, de Parwasi Bharatya Diwas de Chennai, India.